Frequency Matters, the R from Microwave Update series. I'm Pat Hindle, and I'm here with my guest co-host, Yasmeen King, General Manager of Aerospace and Defense at Analog Devices. Welcome back to the show, Yasmeen. Thank you, Pat. Thanks for having me. So in this episode, we're going to take a look at our April amplifier and oscillator themed issue. Our cover story is about improving oscillator phase noise with passive vibration isolation and also accelerometer-based vibration compensation and it's written by Wenzel Associates, which is now part of Quantic Electronics. They use both of these techniques and it enables significant improvements in phase noise for high performance applications. So Yasmin, what did you see that sounded good to you in the issue? There were two interesting articles that I saw, Pat. The first one was about reinventing the YIG technology for microwave filter applications. The article reviewed existing filter technologies and then described a new generation of surface mount, low power, tunable filters, YIG resonators. And the second article, which I saw covered a 3D printable photopolymer and printing technology, enabling high gain V and W band dielectric lens antennas, which is an active area these days. Yeah, the higher frequencies are really becoming more popular. A lot of products are being released. And that's a trend that we saw at European Microwave Week that took place last week. A couple in the news were Altum RF announced three new gas PHEM mimic amplifiers. These were targeting applications in the Q, V, and E bands, and they use wind semiconductors 0.1 micron gas PHEM technology. Their low noise amplifier operating from 37 to 59 gigahertz has 2.5 dB noise figure and 26.5 dB linear gain at 50 gigahertz. Their linear amplifier operates from 57 to 71 gigahertz with 25 dB gain. And they had another low noise amplifier that operates from 71 to 86 gigahertz with 22 dB gain and four dB noise figure. And it was interesting that Greg Baker commented that they had first pass success on all these designs. That's so pretty impressive at these frequencies. And another release was from Filtronic and they extended their portfolio of E-band power amplifiers. These are four and eight way models that have integral temperature sensor with an analog output for monitoring thermal performance. And the models have an optional circuitry for control of gain and muting and alarms. And these were designed for long range commercial and military telecommunications applications, including LEO and the high altitude platform systems. And these cover from 71 to 76 gigahertz and also 81 to 86 gigahertz. The PAs have a saturated output power of 36 dBm with 1 dB compression power of 31 dBm and transmit power control range of 10 dB. These are very impressive uh, products from these European companies. Yasmin, what did you see in the news? Well, Pat, the last time I was a guest on your show, we discussed hypersonic missiles. And recently, I saw that DARPA and its U.S. Air Force partner, completed a free flight test of Lockheed Martin's version of the hypersonic air-breathing weapon concept, or HAWK. According to DARPA's news release, the vehicle, after release from a carrier aircraft, was boosted to its Aerojet Rocketdyne scramjet engine ignition envelope. From there, it quickly accelerated to and maintained crews faster than Mach 5 for an extended period of time. The vehicle reached altitudes greater than 65,000 feet and flew for more than 300 nautical miles. This is actually the second successful flight in DARPA's Hawk program. Last September, we saw a different vehicle configuration from another contractor team also reach hypersonic flight. And then in addition, BAE Systems successfully completed prototype tests of its multiple object tracking radar or iMotor. It's a mobile instrumentation radar that provides precise radar data on multiple objects. The company demonstrated iMotor's ability to meet critical key performance parameters. The system uses low-cost phased array technology developed by DARPA to provide an affordable high-performance radar. The phased arrays are operated with an interferometry design that makes iMotor more accurate than conventional tactical phased array radars. And then lastly, Raytheon Missiles and Defense was awarded a $651 million contract for full rate production of the SPY-6 family of radars. Their contract with options totals $3.2 billion and five years of radar production to equip up to 31 U.S. Navy ships with SPY-6 radars. 
Under the contract, the company will produce solid state, fixed face, and rotating SPY-6 variants that will deliver high performance integrated air and missile defense capabilities for seven types of US Navy ships over the next 40 years. So overall, Pat, there's a lot of information and a lot of news in the market today. Yeah, a lot on the A&D front. So uh, turning to events, I did just return from European Microwave Week in London last week. It was pretty well attended. Uh, I'd say about 60% of the normal size pre-COVID. There were about 150 companies exhibiting in there. And so it was pretty busy, uh, but not overwhelmingly so. And I mentioned in the news that a big trend there was higher frequency products and components. And I was seeing a lot of uh, applications even over 100 gigahertz. Form Factor uh, teamed up with Keysight and Virginia Diodes, and they're now supplying an on-wafer probe station to 225 gigahertz. And also MPI was showing off a wafer probing system into the terahertz region, and they can even do that over temperature. And the low pole and all these general test companies have solutions all the way into the terahertz range for many applications, and amplifiers and components are now being released I think a lot of them are targeting 6G research, which would go, be going into these uh, sub-terahertz ranges. And they're also for communications, but also for sensing applications. I saw RF Lambda released a very broadband amplifier family. It covers 75 to 110 gigahertz with 42 dB gain. Virginia Diodes now has noise sources up to 220 to 330 gigahertz. And Urzia, which is a Spanish company, has an amplifier line in the Q, V, and W bands. So lots of activity on the European front, too. So Microwave Journal did organize the Defense Space and Security Forum again. And we had sessions from Analog Devices, Rodian Schwartz, and Corvo on space sensing topics. We did videotape all those uh, presentations, so they will be online in about a week. And uh, Gary and I are busy behind the scenes trying to do a show wrap up. So in about a week, you'll also see that with along with photos and videos. So we completely give you a good review of what happened there in London. So Yasmin, what did ADI feature at European Microwave Week? Well, Pat, we had a lot going on. And first of all, it was just so nice to feel the energy of a show again and to see, even though, like you said, it was only 60%, there was a very strong energy at the show and good to see the foot traffic. Our stand featured live demonstrations across the uh, broad RF spectrum from component selection through basic circuit block integration to full system level platforms. We had a few different demonstrations that were running. One was full integration of multiple technologies in complex microwave modules and packages at the die level for use up to 60 gigahertz. Another was multi-channel development platforms, which include a 16 by 16 phased array prototyping platform for radar, satellite communications, and electronic countermeasures. And then we also had a hybrid beam forming radar development platform for X-Band. And lastly, a 5G millimeter wave instrumentation grade signal chain product platform. So overall, there was a lot going on. It was great to see the uh, team members there. And we also, in addition to the booth, we had uh, some of our experts deliver a couple of technical presentations on the defense side. Uh, in the Defense Security and Space Forum panel session, which you hosted, Mike Jones, our System Platform Manager, and Brad Hall, our Systems Applications Manager, discussed technology advancements, enable next generation SATCOM and space-based radar. And then in the Rodian Shorts technical workshop, Kieran Barrett, product applications engineer for broad market frequency generation at Analog Devices, and Ian Collins, head of engineering for the EMEA region for Richardson RFPD, presented frequency synthesizer design and testing. So I hope all of you got to see that and look forward to hearing your feedback. Yeah, you guys had some of the best demos, so I think we videotaped four of them. So out of those demos, you'll definitely see uh, a lot from Analog Devices. So that wraps up this episode. Our sponsor today is RFMW, a premier pure play technical distributor of RF and microwave products. Call them for any device or component needs you have. Thanks for watching and join us next time on Frequency Matters.